Now here's a question for you. How many of y'all keep a spaghetti can on your bench? I'll tell you about mine in a second. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So about my spaghetti can, every once in a while, I will just sit down at the bench and try something new. It's just experimental fly tying. I'm not looking at any books or watching any YouTube videos. I'm just trying to experiment and come up with something cool. And every once in a while, that works. You come up with a great pattern, you take it out of the river and it catches fish for you. But every once in a while, you come up with some disasters. You know, I've made some pretty bad looking flies that I'm not even putting them in my bad fly box. And when I do that, they go in the spaghetti can. So why I tell you about this, aside from the fact that everybody needs a spaghetti can on their bench, is every once in a while, I'll take it and just uh, look through it and look for some inspiration. You know, maybe I will find something that I want to retry, uh, like this. Here's a dragonfly. It's a really cool looking body on this guy, but I don't know why I put a pink or purple thorax and it's missing a wing, but I've got a couple other cool looking patterns in here that, you know, maybe I should give them another shot. Just change one of the materials, change one of the colors, and have a go with it. Okay, so that little bit of background aside, let's talk about today's fly. It's summertime right now, and we all know it's terrestrial season. Now, just a couple weeks ago, we did a deer hair ant, and that was a pretty fun pattern. And the next logical fly in this progression is a deer hair beetle which is tied very similar, still uh, only two materials. I'm using black deer hair and I'm putting some ice dub for the, the belly of it and then using the same deer hair for the legs. Now I do fish this thing as a single fly, so I'm gonna put an indicator on it and I'm just using some white pair posts, but I'd use anything white uh, yarn or synthetic that you might have. Now I probably wouldn't put a foam indicator on this thing cause nah, just mixing deer hair and foam, that's kind of heresy, I wouldn't wanna go there. But if you want a cool looking foam beetle pattern, check out Huey Graves. He tied one recently. That thing looks pretty good. So today's pattern, it's a really easy tie. And under the right conditions, this thing can be a lifesaver. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise. Just a simple little terrestrial a deer hair beetle. If you notice this one, I've got a little bit of green, olive green in the underbody. Um, that's because a lot of the beetles around here in Maryland have a green tint to them. Some of them have a little gold tint. And, you know, a dead beetle floating down the river, it's gonna be floating belly up as, as often as not. So the fish are gonna see that green in a natural. Now this is a size 12 hook. I'll tie it as big as a 10. And I am using black thread. This is 70 to near. Now you might want to be careful for using thread this thin because sometimes it will, you know, cut into your, your deer hair. So if you feel comfortable stepping it up to a, a uh, 140, yeah, by all means go for it. Now I've already got a big, pretty thick stack of deer hair in my stacker, but I'm just gonna put a little drop of super glue right there. And you don't necessarily need to rush. I don't want it that. And let's try to spin that out just a little bit right there. All right, that's, that's fine. Okay, so I've got that little drop of super glue on there and I've got some black deer hair and it's stacked. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be stacked. It'll just make it a little bit easier to tie in. We're gonna tie it in with the tips pointing forward. Let's see, how about we just do that right there. I'm gonna do some loose wraps. And I'm gonna take it pretty far back. I might put some tight wraps in just a second, but loose wraps at first, just to really get this uh, bound in. And I found you probably want to take it a little bit farther around the bend than you think, because it's going to shorten up when you pull it over. So go pretty far back around the bend there. You might want to throw a few wraps right here. Now we're going to put some dubbing on. Now this, I would say this is, is totally optional what you use here. Like I said, the, a lot of the beetles here in the Mid-Atlantic have a little green tint to them. Some of them have some green and gold. So I'm gonna use a, a brown, brown olive ice dub. Now I've done it with black ice dub too. That looks pretty good, but this will give it that little bit of a green tint. And I know that looks kind of yellowish in the picture right there, but I promise you it is a green. And this is one of the cases where, yeah, don't be afraid to overdub it. Let's just, let's see. We can always 
take some of this out, rough it up with our Velcro, or snip it off if you want to later. All right, I, I don't want that much right there. Let's, I'm gonna snip some of that off. A little bit of a mess. I'm not gonna snip it, just gonna pluck it. Okay, so let's back our thread off just a little here. Now we're gonna wrap this over. Grab all your deer hair. We're not gonna pull it tight. You could pull this thing tight and make it look like a humpy, but we don't want it that tight. So I'm, I've got my thread hanging where I want the, you know, the front of this carapace to be. And I'm gonna just kind of push it back a little bit so I can definitely get a little hump right there. Now I'm gonna do a pinch wrap right here medium and that front's going to flare up on you there's not anything you're going to be able to do about that but before you really lock it in take a couple wraps and see if you've got the the round shape you want i think we're going to be fine with this right here so now we can just go in and lock this in and it'll spin on you if you're not careful so just just pay attention to that you might want to hold it tight and if it does it's not really a big deal now here's another optional step. If you wanna put a post on it, because this thing does float well, but it's still not that visible. So um, if you're gonna fish it with a, some kind of indicator, yeah, you probably don't need this on it. But a lot of times I will fish this so low, so I will put a little bit of indicator on it. And this is just white parapost. I, I got a couple inch piece right there, and I'm just going to Put a few wraps in the middle, a few in front of it, and then maybe bind it with one or two more behind it. And I've never had any problem with these falling out on me. I mean, if it does, then it's not really a big deal. You've just got a, a fly with no indicator on it. So before I trim the front, I'm gonna go in here and cut this post down to size. And it doesn't take much. It takes a lot less than you might realize. So just get in here and cut it pretty short and it'll poof out on you too. So there we go, that's a little bit of an indicator. You'll be able to see that pretty well. Okay, now here's another tip that, how are you gonna do the legs on this thing? Well, I'm just gonna pull a few of the fibers down to each side. Some of them are gonna break, don't worry about that. Just three or four or five, maybe more on each side, we can trim them and then all the rest pull up and we're gonna trim the head almost like a, an elk hair caddis. You know, beetles do have heads. So, mm, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and snip this right here. Maybe just a little bit smaller than our post. Okay. Now, that's a decent looking profile. Of course, these hairs right here are way too long. Beetles have distinct legs, but they're not that long. So just go in here and cut them pretty short. Right there, do that on both sides. We'll crinkle them up. And if you've got too many, as I probably do right there, you know, beetles don't have 10 legs on each side. They're insects, they've got three legs on each side. You can either leave it and not be picky about it, or just go in here and, and trim it till you have about three or four. But after a day of fishing with one of these guys, you might be short legs anyway. You might have lost a few of them. I don't really know how durable this fly is. I don't think it's all that durable, but I've never had one get worn out by catching too many fish. So I think we'll be fine right there. You know, we got four or five legs coming off each side. And I'm gonna whip finish it kind of like I would an elk hair caddis, just right up under the, the head right there. So a few wraps and grab your whip finish tool. So that's really it. Pretty simple pattern right there. You got a little bit of that green showing underneath. You got the big oval shape looks kind of like a beetle and the few stubby legs sticking off the side. 
if I did put a drop of head cement, I'd just flip it upside down and and put the smallest drop right under the eye right there to let it soak into those thread wraps. But that's it, everybody. A very simple pattern can be super effective if you've got beetles out and you're in terrestrial season. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.